I've never made a video like this before, simply because with such a small channel I can't really see that anyone would be particularly interested. However, I've been mentioning selling off over half my collection recently to fund some new acquisitions, so having just hit the 1000 subscriber milestone, for the long term followers of the channel I thought I'd put together a video just talking about what has stayed and what has left my collection. Now I'll start by saying that I have 3 watch boxes, and the other 2 hold 12 models rather than 10. As you can see, I don't have them with me, and that's largely because, well, they're pretty much empty. I've brought a couple of the models that are still in those boxes to add in as honourable mentions, but I realise a video like this might be quite controversial to some, because there are bound to be some watches that I've sold onto new homes that many of you would like to have or own or would never consider selling. There are also a couple of watches where I've made keep or sell videos on them and said that it was my intention to keep them, but I've later on changed my mind and sold them. And I discussed that issue in my last video where I felt a certain amount of recency bias has been affecting my judgement. But now that I've picked up on that, I'm going to be a lot more ruthless with my decisions in future. Before we get onto the collection itself, I'm just going to very briefly go through all the watches that I've sold onto Pastures New, with some very brief detail as to why I made the decision to part with them. I'll just preface that discussion by repeating what I said in my last video. I don't regret owning any of these watches. I see them all as part of my watch journey, a way of refining my tastes. Some I made money on, some I lost money on, but I enjoyed them all. Ultimately, the biggest deciding issue with all of these watches is that they never saw enough wrist time, and you can blame the 12 from Christopher Ward for most of that. So, in no particular order, let's get into this. I bought this watch because I loved looking at the movement and the complication, but I never wore it and always felt bad that it never left the watch box. The start of a bit of a theme here, a watch bought for me by my wife that I've gone on to sell. I'll add right now that these are watches that I've asked for, not ones that she's picked out, and while I do feel awful for selling on gifts, I also feel awful for having watches I don't wear, so it's a bit of a lose-lose in that situation. I love the colour of the Devil Diver, but even this smaller 41mm oceanographer is just a bit too big for me. I was really surprised by just how good this San Martin model was. The specifications, build quality and finishing are all on point, but the more I used it, the more the handset grated on me. It just isn't clear enough which hand is which in my opinion. So I sold on this San Martin, but I have since gotten another, which you'll see later in the video. I absolutely love the adventuring dial on this model. Not exactly an original aesthetic to the M1 Milano, but I'm not against it. I really love how thin the watch is, I'm just not a fan of the clasp, and as an integrated sports watch, it was going directly up against the 12, so it really had no chance in the long term. I went through so many stages with this watch. From not being sure about it, to loving it, to pining for one when they weren't available, finally being able to buy one, but then the rattle from the micro rotor was just too much for me. I felt silly every time I heard it. I absolutely love the design of this watch. The meteorite dial, the blue accents, the black bezel, the angular case. However, the dimensions just aren't it for me. It's too thick and bulky for my wrist. Definitely like Zelos as a brand now though, and meteorite as a dial material. I actually love this watch, and of everything that I've sold, it's the model I miss the most. But the reality is, I want to get hold of a general purpose mechanical as its replacement. You can't really go wrong with a khaki field automatic, it just didn't see enough wear time for me, and if I was willing to sell my favourite field watch with the Marathon, this one didn't stand a chance. Very reliable though, and goes with everything. Exactly the same reasoning as the tourbillon really, I love the movement, but I just never wore the watch.
The Pro Diver was the first automatic watch I ever bought. Bought out of curiosity and never really because I liked the design, but absolutely deserving of a new home. This one was a little bit of a holiday romance to me. I absolutely love the looks of this watch, but it's too big for me and I have other Casio models that fit me better. A lovely watch, but a colorway that doesn't really suit the British weather and always got outcompeted by any number of Casio models in my collection when it comes to rough and ready activities. I'm fairly sure my wife will kill me when she finds out I've sold this on, as it was also a gift, but as you'll see in a moment when we get into my remaining collection, it's basically been upgraded and I'm unlikely ever to choose the Moon Swatch again as a result. Exactly the same as the Moon Swatch in terms of justification. Really not bad value for the price though, if you don't mind a homage. In my mind, the best all-round watch that I've sold from my collection. Absolutely nothing wrong with it whatsoever. I love the model, I love the sizing, love the brand. Just never saw any real wear time once I got the 12, and I sold it to fund its replacement in the Black Bay 54, which has also supplanted the 12 on my wrist, so, Worth it? If I was willing to sell my favourite dive watch in the Trident, my second favourite never really stood a chance. In truth, this isn't the Super Sea Wolf I've always wanted. That would be the Aquamarine Dream, so I wouldn't be too shocked at myself if I got one of those somewhere down the line. Mine was really uncomfortable to wear, simple as that for me, but really good value, especially if you're after a textured dial on a budget. Loved the retro design, ended up hating the bracelet. Another short-lived holiday romance, unfortunately. I definitely need to remind myself of this and the larger Casio the next time I'm peering through a shop window overseas. Actually, a really nice watch that surprised me with its value and build quality, but I could never get over the handset or the branding on the dial. I love the System 51 movement. It's so fun to look at and study, but the watch was far too big for me. This was yet another present from my wife, the final one in the trilogy that I've sold. I promise I do have some watches that she's bought for me in my collection still. The PRX had its days numbered for me the moment the 12 was released. It's certainly not a bad watch and measures up pretty well against the 12 given that it's basically half the price or under, but it just isn't as good in my opinion. I think the colourway on this watch is fantastic. The ripple dial really adds to that. Build quality is also great and it looks so good on the beach. I guess I just never spend enough time on the beach to make that much of a selling point for me. Not only that, but dimension-wise, it's just a little on the large size for me. So, there you have it. A whistle-stop tour of everything I've sold from my collection. I guess, in the end, I just don't believe in keeping watches for the sake of keeping them. And all of these went on to new homes, where I can only hope they see far more risk time now than they were getting with me. Like I said before, I'm sure a segment like that might ruffle some feathers, but before you tear me apart in the comments, let's try and appease you by looking at what I've kept and why. Before we get into the main box, I want to begin with a few honourable mentions, and all three are Casio models. One of the least popular videos I've ever made, so maybe I'm alone in my fandom for calculator watches, but I absolutely love the nostalgia of this thing. My little project watch, which at the moment is pretty hideous, and I'm fairly sure I'm only going to make it worse in the future, but I'm having fun with it at least. This one hasn't really featured on my channel yet, but it's my favourite Casio. Love this little watch. It's my favourite of the Casios to date, but I will say I haven't had any experience with the P2100 range. On the surface though, I think the S looks better. On to the big box, and what I want to make clear is that only two of the watches you're about to see were bought new from a retailer, and even then, only one at recommended retail price. 
The rest are all second hand. I've had to sell off not only a huge chunk of my collection as you've seen, but also my entire Pokemon card collection to be able to afford these models. And I've been collecting them over a number of years. I don't want this to remotely come across as some kind of ostentatious show because it really isn't, but I do love talking about watches. So any excuse, here we go. I won't dwell on this one at all because I've already had to name check it a couple of times so it was clearly going to feature, but I will just say that this is my most worn watch and by a clear margin. This is my latest addition to the collection and a watch my wife bought me as a birthday present. I told you I kept some. It will feature in a video on my channel in due course once I've had enough time with it. What I would say as a sneak peek is, given the advertising, when I first saw my model, I was a little bit confused as I thought there would be a lot more obvious marble effect on the dial. But what I've come to notice over time is there actually is a fair amount, but it's subtle and requires a bit more study to pick out. While I don't think this model is going to be as popular as the Adventuring, Lapis or Wave Dial variants, I think this more understated look is actually going to help the watch win itself more wrist time with me. Green is my favourite colour, this is my favourite green watch, my wife bought this for me to celebrate our 10th wedding anniversary, it's never leaving my collection, simple as that. I can see a world where I would sell my Grand Seiko GMT, but realistically only when I could afford a spring drive to replace it. For a long time Grand Seiko were my favourite brand, and they're still right up there. I absolutely love this watch, the only downside for me is its use case scenario. It's comparatively expensive compared to my usual watches, especially to be taken through airport security, leave it in a hotel or wearing out in public, and so I don't tend to take it away with me unless I know where I'm going is a really safe place. So the GMT aspect doesn't get as much use as it should. However, I did sell my entire Pokemon card collection to buy this watch, so it does mean a lot to me. Now, what I just said about the entire Pokemon card collection is almost true, but actually one card that I sold, my Portuguese first edition base set Charizard that I packed while on holiday as a kid, sold for so much that I actually bought this Black Series model to commemorate that moment. While having something I could actually interact with rather than a card I thought I'd lost in my loft for decades. I don't think I'd ever part with it for that reason. Those orange accents mean more to me than they do to most people. They're clearly fire blasts and flamethrowers. Not that I have much cause for a dress watch in my day to day life, but this watch is the king of texture on a budget. So when the need occurs to dress up smart, this is my go-to. When the need doesn't occur, I really just like looking at the dial. I'll never get rid of this watch because for me it's my Genesis, the first watch I bought in my entire collection and a reminder of the start of my horological journey. It doesn't get much wear at all because it's vintage and I don't want to be the one to break it given that it's already been around for over 60 years. The Black Bay 54 is the culprit for me selling off most of my collection in the first place, so it's a good job it's my new favourite for a daily wear. The last video on the channel is essentially a 10 minute love note to the 54, so I won't say any more on it here. This watch hasn't featured on the channel yet either, but when I found I'd sold more than I needed to to be able to afford the Black Bay, this is what I used the remainder of the money to buy. I made an hour long retrospective on the Moon Watch, Moon Swatch and the Speedmaster range, I've owned two Moon Swatches in my time and even tried out the Pagani Homage, so it was pretty clear to me that ultimately I just needed to bite the bullet for real. I knew that the real deal professional models were either far too expensive or just outright too big for me, so the reduced makes a lot of sense from my perspective. I won't go into any more detail here for the sake of brevity, but I will say I do love this watch. Actually, the video I made on my Datejust is the least viewed on my entire channel, which I think says a lot about the perception of the brand. But of course, whenever you talk about vintage models, the views won't be as high because it's never going to be easy to get hold of them if you want one. This is essentially my obtainable grail watch. I absolutely love it even if I can't stand Rolex. And if I'm a big fan of the Black Bay for its vintage styling, I love this date just even more because it is actually vintage. And the look and feel of the watch is just so clean and focused. 
Not a fan of the brand, but absolutely love this model. So there you have it. That's the current state of my watch collection, which also gives a sneak peek into at least a couple of videos that are gonna be coming soon on the channel. I hope you've enjoyed this. It feels a little bit self-indulgent as far as the video goes, but I couldn't think of a better way of celebrating hitting the 1000 subscriber milestone with you all. Of course, feel free to flame my decisions in the comments. There's no way everyone is going to agree with me over something divisive like this. All I can say is that I'm really happy with my current collection. As ever, thank you for your time. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, consider dropping the video a like and subscribing if you want more content like this.